Hey, what up, guys? Coming to you this morning, we're going to do the 2019 year in top 10s. This is the last division I'm going to cover. It is the 147 pound welterweight division, the division that I believe is the best in boxing right now. So, uh, this video, we're going to focus on the three dropouts, and then I'm going to discuss the three way tie for 10th. Um, let's start with the three dropouts. First of those is. Uh, former WBO champion Jeff Horn of Australia 31 years old he was uh, coming off of 2018 where he lost the WBO title to Terrence Crawford in June by a pretty one sided ninth round TKO um, he moved up to a catchweight uh, between junior middleweight and middleweight to take on uh, countryman Anthony Mundy and he got a first round TKO in that one and um, he pretty much made the decision to move all the way up to uh, to middleweight, which is 160. But he said he was keeping the option open for 147 if he could get the right opposition, the right people to fight him. Um, middleweight felt better to him. He ended up uh, fighting two times in 2019 when he took in Bolter against Michael Zafara, another uh, uh, Australian um, foe. And he got, um, he ended up getting knocked out the first fight, and then the two rematched, and he got a majority decision in the rematch. So, um, Horn wants to push forward at middleweight, and, um, you know, I think he's going to try to get entitled contention for Ryota Murata, which was originally part of the plan before he lost to Zafara uh, earlier in the year. So, we'll see what happens. Um, Horn, I don't believe he's going to return to the welterweight top 10. I just think it's too much weight by this point. He'll have uh, better opportunities fighting in the heavier weight classes. Next to drop out is former four division world champion, 30 year old Adrian Broner of the United States. Broner entered the year number nine. Um, you know, Broner took on, uh, he was coming off of 2018 where he only fought once when he fought to a draw with, um, with uh, Jesse Vargas. And, um, you know, he fought hard in that fight, but um, it was kind of typical Broner the last few years. He just, um, he got out punched in that fight, but he landed some good hard shots, closed the fight out strong. So he was coming into this year, and then he got a golden opportunity to face Manny Pacquiao earlier in the year for the WBA title. And um, I thought it was at least going to be competitive for a little bit, or for a while. And it just wasn't competitive at all. And I, I just think Broner showed up to, to collect a check. Um, and I was really disappointed because I thought he'd step his game up for Pacquiao. And Pacquiao, I mean, I know that a lot has to do with Pacquiao too, but um, Pacquiao, you know, dominated him, of course. But, you know, I think Broner could have done a lot better if he would have worked harder, and he just didn't. He just didn't seem like he cared. Um, after a couple rounds, he just seemed like he was ready to cat, you know, mail it in and uh, collect a check and that was all she wrote he didn't come back the rest of the year and I'm glad and to be honest I hope Adrian Broner retires I really can't stand Adrian Broner I think he's a disgrace to the sport um I, I think my biggest hang-up is that he is talented and he could do a lot more if he dedicated himself to the training and to the sport he could make a lot more money which his nickname is or his uh, promotion his own promotion is called About Billions, AB. And um, I don't think he's ever going to come anywhere close to the billions being worth that much because, you know, he just doesn't uh, take what his talent and apply it to his attitude and his bravado that has sold so well for him since he was younger. So, you know, he made his last big check, and I hope that is the last one because we also don't need to see this guy get hurt because he – uh, comes back and gets his ass whipped, but I don't think he's going to put himself in harm's way. I think we will see him back uh, in the sport and fighting again to make money, but um, I'm not sure if he makes a top 10. He'd have to get a legitimate top 10 guy and beat him um, in order to break back in. So we'll see what happens with Adrian Broner. And then the last fighter to drop out of the top 10 is a 30-year-old contender, Adrian Granados. He entered the year number 10. Um, he took on uh, Danny Garcia in April, got his ass whipped, knocked out in seven rounds, and then he moved back down to 140. I discussed Granados' year 
in full when we did the junior welterweight top tens because he cracked the junior welterweight top ten. Um, so make sure you're checking that one out. That video I go all into detail in that one for uh, for Granados. Now let's take a look at the three way tie for tenth that I have heading into 2020. We'll kick it off with um, Thomas Delorme, former world title challenger. Delorme entered the year coming off of 2018 where he he threw himself back in the mix when he fought to a hard 12-round draw with, Jesse, with former champ Jesse Vargas in a fight that nobody really gave him a chance in. Um, uh, Vargas was, uh, was starting his DAZN contract with uh, Matram and Eddie Hearn, and he got the main event of this card. And um, the two ended up trading knockdowns. Actually, Delorme saved the fight for himself with a knockdown of Vargas in the 12th round. And um, it was a good, evenly uh, even fight. It went to scorecards and a draw was uh, rendered. And, you know, you would think Delorme was going to capitalize on that, but he waited around for all of 2019 until September when he got an opportunity to take on undefeated rising prospect Terrell Williams. Another one I thought the youngster was just going to be the older fighter. But Delorme really isn't that old. He's only 29. But still, I thought he was going to get beat. And he cleanly outboxed and outclassed uh, Williams and scored a 10-round unanimous decision. So now Delorme has shown us that he is a serious player. And um, we'll see uh, what opportunities he gets in 2020 because I still think he's going to be looked at as a stepping stone type guy. Type of guy. Um, so if he can't be used as that by one of the bigger name fighters in the division then i say he goes after an eliminator and tries to move himself in line for a title shot by the end of the year so we'll see what happens that's thomas delorme also tying for 10th is former world title challenger josecito lopez lopez entered the year really with no nothing going for him he didn't really have a 2018 we're talking about um he had taken a lot of time off in between fights and um you know, at 35 now, it's kind of unclear. Uh, so at 34 coming into the year, it was, it was unclear what he's going to do. But he got a gift and a golden opportunity when he was granted a world title shot against Keith one-time Thurman for the WBA belt. Thurman was coming back off to, after a two almost two-year layoff. And you could tell he completely overlooked Lopez because after, after hurting Lopez, um, Lopez battled back hurt Thurman badly in the seventh round almost stopped him in that seventh round um it, it they the two traded they went back and forth throughout the rest of the fight and um Lopez ended up walking out of there with a very close uh majority decision loss I didn't think the fight was that close I thought Thurman did more to win but Lopez did fight his ass off and he did almost knock Thurman out so um you know it ended up being a close fight and he really had proved himself in that one um, and then he came back in September on the Errol Spence Sean Porter undercard and took on John Molina Jr. And again, I thought he was going to lose this fight by knockout to uh, John Molina. And he absolutely went out and dominated Molina. Just beat him to the punch, was the more active and accurate fighter. And um, he landed the better shots. And in the um, he ended up stopping Molina in the ninth round. And now has made himself a player again at 147. So... Congrats on a great bounce back year to Lopez. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what opportunity he's granted because he's another guy that's going to be looked at as a stepping stone guy, um, not too big of a threat, and he could get opportunity off of that. And if he doesn't, take on one of the other guys that's not getting a shot in, a, in an eliminator to try to move himself in line for a world title shot. So we'll see. Excuse me. And the last fighter we're going to talk about today is in tying for 10th is a former WBO champion, Jesse Vargas. He entered the year number eight, drops a couple spots to number 10. Um, Vargas now is sitting at uh, 30 years old, so he's still in the prime of his career. Vargas really um, made a, made his bones at a young age, so the fact that he's a veteran, a solid game veteran at 30 years old, shows that he's still young and good enough to, uh, to do some damage. He moved up to 154 in 2019. Um, pursuing a world title in a second a third weight class and um it just uh he only fought once against Humberto Soto and just didn't get the opportunity he was trying to get Jaime McGuee in the ring but you know what all that ended up working out because he ended up getting a 
more winnable and bigger fight. Uh, towards the end of the year, he was being rumored as an opponent for Mikey Garcia, and that fight got signed right at the end of the year. And uh, those two guys are going to lock horns now on Saturday, February 29th, in the main event of a DAZN card. Um, I know Mikey's coming in a solid favorite on this one, but I would not sleep on Vargas. I think Vargas is a very live underdog. I think he's going to come out um, and do some damage in this one. Going to be a good fight. I can see it going either way. I'm still favoring Mikey to win a decision, but I can see Vargas uh, hurting Mikey, stopping him, possibly even outworking him over 12 rounds. So we're going to see, but Vargas really has a chance to prove how good he is against Mikey Garcia on Saturday, February 29th on the zone. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. That was the year in, 2019 year in top tens for the number one division in boxing, the 147 pound welterweight division. We saw the three-way tie for 10th between Jesse Vargas, Thomas DeLorme, Josecito Lopez, and the three dropouts, which are Jeff Horn, Adrian Broner, and Adrian Granados. I'm coming back with the video for number seven, eight, and nine. Hope you enjoyed this. 2019 year in top 10s of welterweights, true boxing. You've been hit with the truth.